Welcome to episode 86 of the Daniel Yoris podcast, tools to make fitness and your life a little easier. Let's go. Well, here it is, 86 episodes, and that's all it took to sell out and give out the secret about the things that you need to buy to achieve your fitness goals, never mind all the basic stuff that you need to do. So write down promo code Daniel Yours Podcast and take your pen and pencil out or your notepad on your phone, and let's get to it. No more hard work. This is all you need. <laughs> okay. Maybe if one person laughed at that, I'll take it, but obviously... That's not the case, and the basics always and forever apply, but there are a host of tools, gadgets, subscriptions, whatever, that definitely work and definitely will make your life a little bit easier, which may indirectly give better results and all of that fun stuff. So it's worth talking about. I'm typically the anti-stuff guy, and I know that, and you know, no supplements and no this, and not that I don't take any, I, I definitely use supplements and definitely do a lot of other things, um, and they are useful, so don't ever think that they're not useful. It's just that I see so many people who use these things in place of getting good sleep, drinking water, regular exercise, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the things that we talk about all the time. And those things are undefeated and unmatched and nothing will replace those things. You can't just get away with not doing those things. So I need to make that very, very clear off the top. Uh, you need to do all of those things still. And these are the things that we'll talk about in this episode are some things that will, will help you. Now, obviously, uh, also worth mentioning, not obviously, but worth mentioning, I'm not sponsored by any of this stuff that I'll talk about. I don't, I, I'll try not to mention brand names unless I do, but either way, do or do or don't not sponsor by anything. So don't, don't think about that. Um, and the other thing to mention, and I'll, I'll repeat this, especially for, for several of the things that I'm going to discuss that none of these are distinctly a recommendation and none of them are something that you must do. They're all things that you should or could consider, but I'm not saying go out there and immediately do them or immediately buy all of the things or any one of the things, just take them into into consideration and maybe they'll help you. Maybe they won't if it works for you. Obviously, with all of these things, the financial aspect of it matters. Some of them are not that expensive. Some of them maybe are very expensive and that definitely matters. If you know buying a certain thing is going to make you miss your rent payment, like that, that's obviously not worth it. So be intelligent and just, you know, whatever disclaimer is needed for that to Use your brain a little bit to think about the things that we're going to talk about here. So, uh, there was one other quick housekeeping thing. Yes, I have some amazing guests actually lined up for the next like couple of months. I just haven't actually scheduled them because of this construction project that is forever ongoing and impossible to schedule around. So, being respectful, but guest episodes are coming back very, very soon. Um, as soon as this thing is done and I can be respectful of people's times to schedule things accordingly, but, uh, had good response from the solo episodes so far and you know, they're always, uh, enjoyable to do anyway. So we'll keep rolling with these and, uh, guest episodes are coming back very, very soon. But anyways, let's get into this because I have kind of a lot of things on this list. Um, cause they're all worth talking about and I'll try not to make this too long and try not to blabber on about any of them too much besides the ones that really deserve it. So first up, should be pretty obvious, but supplements, namely protein powders, creatine, and things like omega-3, zinc, vitamin D especially, all of these types of supplements. No supplement is strictly necessary unless you are actually deficient in some vitamin or mineral, in which case you need to get that tested by your doctor through a blood test or whatever. That, that is a different thing. In that case, yes, it is necessary for you. But Aside from that, supplements are absolutely not necessary, but they also absolutely work. Creatine definitely works. You don't need it, but it definitely works. Pre-workout, I'm not a fan of it personally. I, I've used it a handful of times, but I don't enjoy it. I'd rather just have a nice espresso and then get to work, but it, it definitely works. No one ever said that these things didn't work. Now, some of them claim to do things that they don't actually do, and they have like some wild promises, so they may not. they might not you know, make you shred 10 pounds of body fat in one week or whatever crazy stuff supplements might say, but they definitely work. So keep that in mind. If you can afford it, if you can also be 
reasonably responsible with them as far as taking them every day, then that's also going to help. If there's a supplement that requires you to take it every single day, then and you only take it every three days, you remember, then that's not really helping you, and you're just wasting your wasting your money and creating expensive pee. So if you're responsible enough to remember to take your stuff when you should take it in the right way, in the proper dosages, all that kind of stuff, supplements definitely work and definitely are something that's worth considering using, especially if you've been training hard uh, for a while and not a beginner. Beginners, they'll just be less, less beneficial only because you have so much room to grow and so much potential to, to gain to grow into that you won't even notice a tangible difference from the supplements. But if you've never taken creatine, for example, you've been training for two, three years, you train pretty hard, you start taking creatine, like you, you'll start to feel something. If you have just started training, you start taking creatine, it's not going to harm you. It'll still help. You just won't really notice it that much. So it's like this minimum effective dose approach that I always like to use. You probably don't need them mostly up front, but as far as your health, especially vitamin D heading into the winter time now, that's definitely going to help but that's a little bit, that's a little bit different. So supplements definitely, definitely like first and foremost on this list, they definitely work absolutely not necessary, but absolutely beneficial if used correctly. Number two, and and I don't know how many I'll get to, but number two will be a meal delivery service of some sort. So one of the things that most people struggle with and probably yourself to some degree, we all struggle with this to some degree is just the food that we intake. And it's the time needed to shop for wash, cut, clean, cook, prepare, store, all these things with our meals. There are plenty of meal service companies out there. Personally, again, never used one because it just hasn't been a thing that I've really needed. I should probably try some just to be able to give good recommendations, but uh, obviously local to my area, but they save you a bunch of time. They're not really that expensive. Actually, I lied. I have used one. It wasn't like fully ready, but it was like gave you the ingredients and whatever. But they're relatively cheap, especially if you're buying. If your options are like buy food out or just like make pasta because it's quick or something like that, then using a meal delivery service that's going to at least have healthy foods that have some protein, some vegetables, some carb that are you know relatively healthy. Of course, it's not as good maybe because it's always leftover food as it would be if you cooked yourself a fresh meal every day. But if you can't cook yourself a fresh meal every day because of time or whatever other reason, these meal delivery services are fantastic. I think along this line is these kind of protein foods, like protein pancakes and protein, but whatever, like extra protein stuff. Like again, personally, not a huge fan of them because I always think, especially the the more dessert style ones, like don't give me a protein cookie. Like if I want a cookie, I'll just have a fucking cookie and, and that's it. Like I don't need a, I don't need my cookies to be healthy. Like I'm not having them every day, but for some other things, if you, if that's your way to bump up your protein intake, and again, this goes in line with just a regular whey protein supplement, but if that's your way to bump up your protein intake and not like hate your life because you don't like eating chicken, then by all means, like a protein pancake or a protein, like whatever, these things are not all that bad. So Something certainly to consider these meal delivery services. If you struggle to get meals in regularly, you find yourself always Uber Eatsing. Like it's probably cheaper than than Uber Eats and delivery. It's certainly healthier than those things, and at least it's regular. It's another thing, kind of like off your mind and and off your to do list. You just pay for the the subscription once a week or however twice a week, however often it comes, and that'll solve a big problem for you if time and meals or not knowing how to cook or whatever is kind of your your thing. So something to consider there. Another one, and this one came up a lot. I asked, I asked for some, for some suggestions on my Instagram for this one as well, and got a few good responses. This one was one that came up a few times, and this was some type of fitness tracker, a, a watch, a ring, a, a, a bracelet or wristband, or some type of fitness tracker or a step counter. Now, again, these things, obviously I'm going to try and not say this every single time. Absolutely not necessary, but certainly helpful, especially if your fitness tracker has some type of uh, function where it, it reminds you to get up and move every hour or every couple hours or whatever the setting is where you know, you've been sitting at your desk and your, your watch or whatever will buzz a notification on your phone say, hey, time to get moving, You know, get up, get out of your chair and move around for 10, 15 minutes, do some squats, do some stretches, walk a lap around the office, go to the bathroom, whatever. These things again. I I think that you don't need to spend a lot of money on it. I wear the the Aura ring and tracks my sleep and tracks steps and a bunch of other metrics and stuff as well. I think it's amazing. I think it's a it's a cool tool. I don't think it's actually necessary. It does help me to 
pay attention to my sleep. I've had it for so long that I, I kind of know now, and I, I don't know that I get as much use of it now that I did when I first got it and first started paying attention to it. It's been three, four years now, maybe even longer, but these things do help and they certainly make you more conscious. A lot of the things that will be in this list is stuff that is going to help you be either more conscious of your fitness, either more organized or somehow more consistent or some combination of all of that stuff. So if you have a watch that's like telling you to get up and and walk and get uh, get off your ass or compete with your friends for steps and make a game out of it, these things are all good. If that helps you get moving, then it helps you get moving. And if it's worth three, four, five, six hundred bucks to you, then it's worth that money to you. And if that's what it takes to get you moving, then by all means, go right ahead. This was another one that I actually, like, I didn't even think about this, but few people mentioned it through Instagram. And so I thought it's for sure worth, worth bringing up. And it was just having some combination of these things, a trainer, whether online or in person, which I mean, that, that that's kind of obvious and a much bigger expense, but of course, or even just a program to follow, whether that's a paid program more specifically than just a free one, because free things, we tend to just not use them and we have no perceived value because we got them for free. And so we don't care. But if you pay 50, 60, a hundred bucks, 200 bucks for a, a, even a cookie cutter program, that'll at least give you some accountability, some structure. And then the other one that came up two or three times was joining some type of public or group community online, whether it be a Facebook group or like some WhatsApp text group or something like that. And these things are sometimes they're free. Sometimes they're paid depending on who's running them and how they, how they operate them and what's included. But it's just like an accountability group of other people who maybe have the same goals as you, maybe they're in the same geographical location or same kind of demographic, your age, your gender, um, And just people who keep each other accountable, you post in the group and say, yep, I finished my workout. The group might have monthly or weekly challenges, a step challenge, a a deadlift increase challenge, a a food consistency challenge, whatever they do. But these things have really helped people. Sometimes it's easier to be accountable and, and to be vulnerable with strangers than it is to be accountable and vulnerable to people we know. It's a lot easier to blow off your significant other or your brother or sister or your best friend than it is to just like blow off some stranger who is counting on you. And that seems counterintuitive, but it, but it, it works this way. And I don't know why it's some strange psychological thing where like some stranger and to be part of the group, you'll, you'll make it there for them. But if it's like your brother, you'd be like, ah, well, whatever, you know, he's not gonna, he's not gonna hate me for this. Like he's my brother. He's not gonna hate me because I skipped my workout today. (laughs) But that person online, you know, you skip enough workouts and they're going to stop messaging you back. This stranger avatar person online. Now, obviously be careful and don't be stupid and give out personal information and all (laughs) those things. I hope that we're, we're mature enough and critical thinkers enough to get past that. But if these kind of online support communities um, can help you or in person, if you have something, you know, a group of people in your neighborhood or even at your gym, something like that, certainly, certainly worth it. I talk about having a program all the time and the importance of having a coach, obviously biased to myself and, and, you know, shout out to myself for that one. If you need help, coach, blah, blah, website, all that stuff. But having a program is, is paramount to making success. I think that most people who even start a program, even if they've been working out for a while, just introducing a little bit more structure always, always tends to help. So have a program if you don't and join a community if you think that that online kind of accountability will will help you. Okay, coming up next, we've got a little bit more, a little bit less common things. So things like using a hyperbaric chamber uh, cryotherapy or ice bath of some sort, a sauna, float tanks, I kind of group all of these into the, I guess you can call it biohacking. And, and I'm not going to go and talk about the individual benefits of each one because that's a whole separate episode. But the use of these therapeutic modalities, you might say, they do work. They don't magically strip away body fat and like do all this magic stuff. And I, I've probably used the word magic when it comes to ice baths and saunas and like this kind of more meditative float tank, whatever stuff, but it's not actually like you just go in there and then all of a sudden you're like this old person and you're amazing and you're in, you're fit and you're happy and all this stuff. Like you will feel a little happier. Yes, there are fitness and health benefits to these things, but in the absence of taking care of everything else, they won't, they won't help you. But if you're on top of things, 
then these things will help you, help you with your recovery. I've never used a hyperbaric chamber. I think the concept is amazing. I know that it's widely used around the world and it has been, it's not new in any way. And it's, it's starting to make a bit of a, a bit of a surge here. So I, I would be surprised if there's going to be some, some hyperbaric chamber centers popping up. I don't know of any that are like in Toronto. If someone knows of one, like, please let me know because I'd love to, I'd love to go visit, but, uh, ice baths and, and sauna for sure. Shout out to other ship for that one in Toronto and anywhere else. I mean, you can just get a bathtub full of ice, the float tanks, float Toronto, who we've had on the podcast a while back now and other float centers in and around Toronto GTA and anywhere else in the world. These things are all great. They help you be a better person, I think. And this is the part that helps you with the fitness as well as the actual physical benefits for your recovery that will help you with your workouts so you can keep working out harder and become a little bit of a nicer person, have a little bit better mental health or have a new strategies as to how to deal with that thing or those things that are bugging you and holding you back in some way. So all of that encompass, I think these kind of modalities are some of the strongest to help with all of that. Now, okay, let me take a sip of water for the next one here. This is the big one. And this is the one that's, it's worth mentioning, but I will put another asterisk disclaimer on this one as I'm not recommending that you do this. I'm simply presenting it as something that is effective, comes with its share of downsides, as does everything else, financial or otherwise included, its share of risks, but worth understanding that this is something that will help you. I have no personal experience with using any of these substances, but I know many people who have and have said good and horrible things about it. And this, I'll just say it, it's steroids or testosterone or hormonal therapy of some sort. So the steroids work. Nobody would ever say that, that they don't work. However, like everything else, they're not magic. You can't just sit on your ass and eat potato chips and do nothing and, you know, watch the news and be a vegetable, you know, potato on the on the couch and then just take steroids and just be jacked and happy and successful. Like that that they don't they work, but they don't work that well. Now, I would also separate these two things into just purely the testosterone, like the hormonal replacement therapy, TRT, if you've heard of that, and like the anabolic steroids, D-ball, Anavar, Trend, whatever, all that stuff. I don't think that the anabolic steroids are necessarily worth it because unless you're trying to get like really big as in a professional bodybuilder or something like that, then in that case, it's like, yeah, you've got to, you know, that's part of the sport and it is what it is. And sorry if you thought that all your <laughs> favorite bodybuilders were like all natty because they're not and that's okay. It doesn't, doesn't, belittle what they do or the achievements they have or the physiques that they build or anything like that. But the testosterone is a lot more interesting. We live in an environment now where we're working against it very hard, or we should be trying to work against it. And this goes for everything, just even for our weight, for the ability to move. We don't move that much because we're sat down at desks and stuff all day, but we're also in an environment that is like lowering testosterone. And this is not like a, you know, like pro men, anti-feminist like it's not it's not that it's like there are actual physiological things in our environment in the soaps in in the food in the water in the air in the clothes that we wear the plastics and all these things that physiologically like lower testosterone in men and in women it's not good for either i don't know how it actually works for for women taking trt i don't think that that's really advised unless you're using it for like purely anabolic reasons but again i'm not sure about that so don't quote me on that but for men you want your ste- your steroid you want your testosterone levels to be up to par and the average male's testosterone now i don't know the exact numbers but it's way lower than it used to be you know 30 40 50 years ago and that's that's not good so what i'm saying is this it's not something that you should look to right away if you're a little bit older 40 plus, it's probably something that you should go get tested. First of all, test your hormone levels at the doctor with a blood test. In Canada, you have to pay extra for that. In the US, you, you pay extra for, you pay for everything. So I'm not sure how it works, but in Canada, you do have to pay extra and you do have to like beg your doctor to give you that test because your doctor won't give you that test just normally. 
The other side of it is this. There is way more dangerous stuff that is very commonly prescribed and just commonly accepted in society than testosterone. Testosterone is a natural thing that occurs in your body. Putting a little bit more of it in is not going to kill you. Putting a lot more of it in, yeah, that, that, might, that might do some damage. The, the devil is in the dose as it is with nearly anything. There's been a lot of stuff reported over the years about about steroid use and oh it shrinks your balls and you you know you can't have kids and you're going to be like a you know a roid monster and all this bad stuff is going to happen to you. Yes, it, it might when you abuse it. And the difference is between use and abuse. We tolerate so much stuff. We tolerate the use of alcohol. That is a normal thing in society to have a couple glasses of wine, a few beers, a couple shots, whatever. That is normal. The abuse of alcohol is not okay when you become an alcoholic, when you're drinking and driving, when you're just, you know, being a sloppy mess out in public. We don't we don't like that and we look down upon that. And fine, that I'm okay with that. But we, for some reason we don't differentiate between the use or abuse of hormone therapy, which is something that many people suffer from. Some people, just medically, not even due to the environment, if you've had head injuries, specifically concussions when you were younger, your testosterone production might be suppressed. And again, please go get all this checked out. Don't, don't just take my word for it. Oh, DY said, so I gotta start injecting tests. Like, that's not what I'm saying. But there are some people who, who actually need it. And it's not okay to just not live normally. Like, I shit on medicine all the time and like doctors and all this stuff. And I try not to, but like, we've invented some pretty amazing stuff. So you should use it if you need it. We use so many other things. So, the, the, the last thing to kind of mention, maybe it's not the last thing, but another thing to kind of mention is this, is like you're not cheating by using this stuff. Unless you play or compete in a sport or an organization where it is against the rules to use testosterone or use steroids or whatever, then you're not cheating anything. Of course, it, it they are illegal. So, so, you know, I should have mentioned that earlier. Like, yes, they are illegal and like it is, I don't know what the penalties are and like how illegal it is, but like it, it's not legal. So get a prescription from a doctor for, for the testosterone, but other stuff it's illegal. But oh, what was I going to say with this? Oh man, I just lost my train of thought. That is so annoying. They, they, they are legal, so that's fine. But if you can, it, it, what was I really going to say? My God. Okay. I forgot my, I forgot my train of thought, but, uh, get get yourself tested for sure understand the like the legal consequences of this and I, this is really gonna piss me off that i thought that i that i lost my thought here but uh, understand the legal consequences if any be responsible don't be stupid about this like it can help you and it definitely does work it doesn't replace everything else you can't just stop eating right and sleeping right and exercising and uh, like all you know you can't the other thing is that don't shit on people who who takes steroids? Oh, I was talking about cheating. That's right. Yes. So you're you're not cheating anything in sport. You're not you're not also it doesn't there's no competition for like, oh, who's the most jack dad out there? Like it doesn't matter. And like whether you took steroids or not, like no one really cares. I don't understand why it's like so taboo on social media and like in the world. Like if you use it, you use it. And if it helps you, then great. If you're doing it in the context of a sport where you're where you know it's against the rules of the sport, then that's a totally different thing and you are cheating, and I think that that should be punished accordingly. But for regular people in regular life, you're not you're not cheating anybody by like by using these things intelligently and safely. So so don't don't worry about the backlash from it. I don't think I think it's becoming more normalized. I do think one other thing to be very cautious of: if you are younger, you should certainly be way more careful because you can cause more damage when you're younger and younger people tend to do stupid things and there is this with the rise of bodybuilding or the the apparent rise of bodybuilding on social media and the popularization of several prominent bodybuilders now there seems to be this push towards like younger kids getting into bodybuilding and for those listening just on audio like heavy air quotes bodybuilding where they're just working out and they think they're bodybuilders and they've been working out for a year and they're you know on all the supplements they take you know three scoops of pre-workout and they're on SARMs and tests and all these other things and it's like well okay but you're you're 19 years old like <laughs> relax like you you have so much room for potential like you're going to destroy your body and then again 
because they're young and dumb. You don't take it right and you don't do the right things and you fuck up your body. And then that's not good. And then that these are the horror stories that you hear about. Oh, look at me. I took, I took this, this and that. And I destroyed my liver. I destroyed my kidney. I had this operation. I had th- these stomach issues. Like these are the horror stories. So don't be one of those people, minimum effective dose for everything. And, and especially with these, because again, the devil is in the dose. If you're taking 10 times what you need to, that's obviously way too much. And that's where you run into problems. If you're taking like hundred milligrams a week or whatever, that's, which is be a pretty low dose that might just bump you up a little bit higher just to kind of a more normal level. And you might feel better. You might sleep better. You might have more drive. You might have better performance in the gym, better recovery, all that stuff. So I've probably talked about this a little bit too much now, but it's an important thing to talk about. I think it's something that should be discussed more openly with more nuance and not so like in the shadows, like people are doing it. It's kind of the same argument as like the, for those who might not know, like marijuana is legal all across Canada and anybody who ever went to high school, (laughs) if you wanted it, it was never hard to get it. So like people were doing it anyways. Why don't we just talk about it and make it open instead of making this like weird illegal thing that's happening underground and secretly and black market, all this stuff. Like if we just kind of like openly have mature discussions about it, instead of leave it to like, you know, the big dudes in the locker room, maybe things would be safer and better. I don't know. That's a huge like government decision and, you know, bigger discussion. But if we have more open discussions about the pros and especially the cons and that we have better education around it, just better communication about it, I think it will be better for all of us. But to wrap this up, it's something that works certainly not something that's necessary, but an option for you if you feel that you need it, but get tested and certainly talk to someone who who knows about it. You can lean on me and ask me questions. I don't know all that much about how to take it and what you should take and all this stuff, but I can I can help you navigate if you need if you need help and help you direct you to some people who know. Okay, now along uh along this line and we're getting a little deeper into the weeds here, and I promise we'll come back out. Psychedelics. This is one that I do have personal experience with. And I'll say that it changed my life for the better. We wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here having this conversation, listening to me and doing all this stuff, if not for it. And so a big, big shout out to to them for that. Um I'll talk about this at a, in at length, my personal experience with it at an, in another time. One very powerful experience that changed my life, changed the course of my life for sure, and got us here. Now, again, heavy, heavy, heavy asterisk and disclaimer. Be very careful. One, legalities, please check, blah, blah, blah. Don't be dumb about that. Two, don't just get them from the guy in the locker room or the guy at the corner of the of the schoolyard. <laughs> be smart about that. And number three, like be very careful what you're getting yourself into. They're very powerful. They are not fun, I would say. I would, it's something that I would never do just for fun. You want to go out and have a few drinks and have a good time? Great. Do your thing. You want to just like go out and party and eat some mushrooms before you do that? Like, no, that sounds like a, that sounds like a fucking horrible time to me. Um, I mean, maybe if you take a small enough amount, I don't know. Never tried that, but but I, that not not the way that I would recommend or want to use them for myself. Again, not recommending that you do this. Recommending that it's something that you think about and consider. It is certainly becoming way more mainstream and way more accepted and reaccepted as there are many more programs and money being funded into research and development of these substances and understanding and especially their impacts on mental health, on addiction, and and, and the aid and, dare I say, healing of these conditions because th- this is what has been shown early in the, in the research trial. So, now, I'll also say this is not something that's really going to help you with your workouts other than the fact that it may give you more clarity in your life and understanding of how important your health is to you. And so that may help you out indirectly, but like it's not going to help you with your gym performance. Like it will certainly not improve your bench press overnight. Like that's, <laughs> that's, that is not what it's for. Um, a conversation that's worth, that's worth another, another chat, but something that I worth mentioning as something that will may improve your life overall. And if that helps to improve 
your fitness and your health and all that stuff, then definitely a good thing. But heavy asterisks, lots of potential downsides, many, many potential upsides. Um, but you definitely have to be careful because you can fuck yourself up and you can you know do some damage. But again, damage is in the dose, damage is in the, the way that you do it. Your intention set and setting is very important. If you're interested in these things, please reach out to me like directly and I'm happy to have a very long conversation with you about it and point you in the direction to some resources that I used to learn about them myself before going on my own journey, no pun. Um, and, and we'll, we'll talk about that. And at some point in the future, like I'll do a full, full breakdown of all this stuff, but I don't think I'm ready for that yet. Um, but yeah, something, something that's powerful, something to consider, something that you should definitely not jump into with two feet in your whole body right away with no prior knowledge or, or talking to someone or anything like that. But, uh, definitely something that is a, is a game changer for, was a game changer for, for me and for my life. And the reason we're having this conversation and, potentially a game changer for yourself as well in, in many aspects. So something to consider, absolutely not necessary though. Whew. Okay, moving on and getting uh, getting a little getting a little lighter here. On the topic of supplements that I mentioned off the off the top, and you've heard me speak about these before, but nootropic supplements I think are a big benefit and something that is up and coming. They've been around for a long time, but kind of getting more attention now. Nootropic supplements are brain boosting, quote unquote, supplements. They're, it's not going to help you necessarily with your gym performance, but it'll help you with short term memory recall, word recall, uh, focus for writing or creativity or mental energy. Sometimes, you know, your body feels good, but you just feel like mentally drained, uh, those kind of things. That's, that's what they're good for. Um, many good brands, uh, that that ex- actually there's not that many good brands i lie there's not that many good brands out there there's a lot of brands that like say stuff and they're just kind of like a more of like a caffeine pill which i guess caffeine technically could be a nootropic but like not really um they're more energy boosters than actual stuff that supports brain health and function so definitely a good one uh, again not necessary not in not going to help you if you're not sleeping that's the biggest one that i found with them if you have a great sleep they're good for getting you past your baseline. They're not really good at getting you up to baseline. If you had a shitty sleep, you haven't been exercising, you haven't been taking care of yourself, and you just want to, you know, take a nootropic. I've found that it doesn't it doesn't actually work that well. But it, when it they do work very well when you're like on point with all your stuff, you take it and you're trying to go like from you know your your baseline level to level ten. That's when they're good. But to get you from like you know minus ten to zero, not not useful there. So. Nootropic something to to look at if you're, I mean, any type of work that you do, whether it be creative, whether you're crunching numbers away at a, at a computer in a corporate job, whether you're anything in between those things. Um, nootropic something to something to look into. Blue light blocking glasses, another one that I found actually to be pretty helpful for me, um, especially as I spend more time on the, on the computer and, and phone and stuff now. And even during the day, we just get so much blasted by blue light. Now, the research is kind of all over the place with, with these glasses. Partly it's maybe placebo, partly not. But you have the glasses that do have that like yellow kind of red blue light blocking filter. I find those to be to be quite helpful. For me, I, I was starting to get like strange headaches and like, I don't know, sore eyes, if that even makes any sense. And this was like earlier in the in the pandemic when when I spent more time on the computer, and and I realized that it was just from being on screen so or being looking at screens so much more, which was new to me. And the, using the glasses definitely helped with that. It definitely also helps like at night as you're winding down, you put on the glasses as you're watching a watching a show or finishing up your emails or finishing up whatever you're doing on your phone before you put all that stuff away before you go to bed. And I found that to be helpful. So and and they're pretty cheap. Like I. When I got them, I was like, okay, let me just get like a cheap pair on Amazon, for like 10, 15 bucks. And then I'll see if I can see if I like them. Cause I don't, I don't wear glasses. So I was like, I don't even know if I'm going to want to wear this on my face. Like it might be pretty annoying. Uh, and I said, oh, I'll just get a cheap pair. And then if they're good, then I'll invest in like a more expensive pair, which is probably like 100 to 150. I don't actually really know, but, uh, I found them to be good. And I was like, oh, okay, these ones are actually great. And I don't, <laughs> maybe they do better, but I can't see how they're like 10 times better. So just get a cheap pair. It's fine. And, uh, it'll do the job. I think that that's one that's really helped me. And especially if you struggle with falling asleep, I think that this might be one of the things that actually really tangibly makes a difference for you. 
All right, we're getting way, way less deep now than we were. I got to take a big breath after <laughs> those other two topics there. But um, okay, continuing. And this one, personally, like doesn't matter to me at all, but it came up on when I asked on Instagram, and I know this from other people, but like buying new or cool updated workout clothes. If there's like a brand that you like or some brand that you like associate with for whatever reason, or you like their style or their colors or the the way it fits or something like that. And somehow that like motivates you to, to get in the gym, to look good in those clothes and to fit into that t- smaller t-shirt maybe, or smaller pair of pants or leggings or whatever, whatever these things. If you, if you go by the look good, feel good mantra, then Maybe investing in some new or some branded workout clothes is great. Personally, I don't care. It doesn't matter for me. There's like, you know, four or five or maybe six t-shirts that I like like to wear when I work out. Probably wear the same ones all the time. Maybe switch up the days (laughs) that I wear them on, but I'll just wear those until there's like holes in them and whatever. It just doesn't, doesn't do anything for me, but that doesn't mean it doesn't do anything for you. So not necessary by any means. The clothes you wear don't have an actual physical, tangible impact on your workout or your power output or your fitness level, except for the fact that maybe it helps you stay more consistent or work harder in the gym or push a little more or just feel happier or feel more excited about the gym and stay a little more consistent. And if it does all those things, then by all means, go right ahead. Just do me a favor and don't complain about buying fancy workout clothes and you spent uh, you know 250 bucks on the new whatever drop, but you can't afford to pay for a trainer or pay for a program or something like that. Like prioritize the way that you're spending your money. But if you have unlimited money, then by all means, again, do whatever you do whatever you want. Just don't spend money on things that like matter less and then complain about not having money to spend on things that, that matter more. That's one thing that just really, really irks me in, in a lot of aspects, but that's a little bit of a conversation for another day. Along the same lines, and we're, we're winding down now here along those same lines. And I found this to be, to be helpful is a good water bottle. Some people like those water bottles that has like the 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m. and has like the lines on it and you fill it up two liters or however big it is. And, you know, by every hour, you, you got to make sure that you're hitting those, the, the notches on the water bottle to make sure that you're drinking enough water through the day. I think it's a great idea, especially if you're someone who struggles to drink water. And if you don't need one with a timer on it, even just having like a, like a solid, sturdy, reusable water bottle to bring around with you, because if you have water with you, you are far more likely to actually drink it than if you don't have water with you and you're constantly looking for where you can get a bottle, where you can get a glass of water, this tap, does, does someone have a disposable cup that I can just have a sip of water? And then you go through the whole day and you realize you've had like one cup of water because that was all you found all day. So if you have a water bottle with you, you fill it up in the morning and maybe make it a bigger one so you don't have to fill it up so often. But if you have that and you can bring it around with you, then that definitely definitely helps to increase your water intake. Again, not a big expense. I think that this one is certainly, certainly worth it and something that will make a difference because it'll help you drink more water if you're someone who struggles to drink enough water. And on that, just in general, like the water intake recommendation is half your body weight in ounces of water, half your body weight in pounds in ounces. So if you're 200 pounds, hundred ounces of water. So that equals whatever, do the conversion. It's something in the neighborhood of like two and a change liters, something like that. Um, but just FYI, a good water bottle helps. Another one that again, no experience with, but people say that it helps them. And obviously a huge expense and time commitment and energy commitment is a dog. People take better care of their pets than they take care of themselves. People will go out of their way to make sure that the dog goes for a walk every day, but they don't take themselves out for a walk. People need a walk. People need healthy food too. I I knew people who have trained in the past who their dogs had better, the the dog was eating, like the dog had this diet of like organic salmon or wild caught salmon and like all, all this like crazy wild cut natural, wild caught natural organic high whatever stuff. And then their diet was literally like McDonald's and fast food and like frozen pizzas. And I, and I sat there listening to this one day And I just said to her, I was like, can you just, just repeat what you said? And I want you to just listen to it. And she's like, she did it. And she's like, oh my God, like, why don't I just do that for myself? Like I should just eat my dog's food instead. I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe you should. So (laughs) 
if this, if now don't do that, that's obviously crazy and a little bit of an extreme example, but a, but a very real example, especially with the walking. I know people will never go for a walk, but they'll take their dog for a walk every day. But if they had, if they didn't have the dog, they wouldn't take themselves for a walk. So if you're walking the dog, you're still walking yourself. So if by whatever, whatever means that, uh, that helps you then, and you can afford the dog and you can afford to take care of the dog properly and treat the dog well and love the dog. Like don't use it as a tool just to make you go for a walk. Like, you know, the dog has to be treated well properly, animal rights, blah, blah, blah. Treat your dog well. But uh, understand that it is an expense and all that stuff. But if it helps you, it helps you. Who, who am I to, to say what works and what doesn't for you? Two more quick things and then we'll, and then we'll get out of here is uh, hand grips or like wrist, wrist straps of some sort. I've spoken about this before. I'm not a huge fan of them. I personally don't use them myself. I've used them in the past, but I don't use them regularly. And these are just things that will help with your grip strength. Typically, these are much more effective and beneficial for women, especially women who are really into training the glutes, which is almost everybody, because you want to do your RDLs, you want to do your deadlifts and, and things like that, your lunges. And the limiting factor naturally is going to be your ability to hold on to the bar or the dumbbell. Your glutes and hamstrings are much stronger than your forearms and upper back is to actually hold on to the bar or the dumbbell. Using these grips can allow you to use a little bit heavier weights that can allow you to get more growth and a little bit more effectiveness out of your workout. And Side note, something that I've also come to realize in the last couple of years is that ladies who have longer nails, if you like to get your nails done, it's hard to close your hand when your nails are done because your nails then dig into your palm and then you have this weird grip, which even if your grip strength is, is not up to, up to scruff, then you don't, you can't close your hand. And so using the grips can help you get a different grip. And I'm kind of showing on the, on the camera, but you'll end up gripping it like this instead of having to close your fist. And so with when your grip is with your fingers pointing down, your nails are just down. So they're not digging into anything. So if you use the straps or the wrist wraps or whatever you use, that can be helpful. Again, absolutely not necessary. You shouldn't use them as a crutch. Like don't use them when you're, you know, holding the 15s for lunges, like, you know, use them when you're, when you need to use them, when your grips are, when your hands and your forearms are actually becoming the limiting factor of the exercise, but they're not the, it's not cheating. It's not the worst tool that you could use. And, uh, it, it, it's, I've seen it be very helpful and very beneficial for, for many people and, and men included, especially if you're going for like big deadlifts, your grips are still going to, your grip is still going to be the limiting factor. So if you're going for some PRs and stuff like that, definitely, uh, definitely worth it to use as your death for, for deadlifts. Just don't, you know, don't, you don't need to use them on your warm up sets. If you need to use them on your warm up sets, then you're just using them and you're being a little bit of a baby and, uh, you should just suck it up and, uh, work on your grip strength. And that's that. And the last one that I'll mention here is buying a good chair. For those office workers at home or in your office, obviously, if it's your company, it's a little bit like different. But if you're at home, invest in a, in a good office chair or like in a good couch if you spend a lot of time working on the couch or whatever. Like I've seen this. There's a gentleman I train who has, who has very limited mobility and ability to move due to some gen- genetic conditions. And he he spends a lot of time sitting in a chair because that's all he can do. And he recently just finally bought a new chair and instantly it changed him. And this is a guy who's like sitting in a chair for like 12 hours a day and doesn't, doesn't move all that much. And so it adds up a lot and think of yourself, you know, you, you work at your desk, you're sitting in your chair, eight, 10, 12 hours a day, you know, you work hard and it changes and shapes your body. And if that chair is like in a little kind of fucked up position, that's like, keeping you, your back, you know, twisted or weird, or you always feel like, you know, it doesn't feel good. That's not okay. And and you're doing that for how many hours a day? There's no way that you can actually offset that. Even if you go to the gym, even if you do all the things, like you're not working out for 12 hours a day. So how are you going to offset what's happening in that chair? So instead of just complaining about the chair and trying to put a pillow and trying to like sit on the side and lean back and lean forward and just get a, get a proper chair, get a proper chair. I know that they're expensive, but is it worth having your back in pain and having your hips tight and all this stuff, the, going to the chiropractor weekly or the, the your physio or athletic therapist, whoever, that's also not cheap. So get a better chair. And that sounds silly and sounds simple, but you know, the here's the analogy. Okay. I was thinking about this since last week, since I got this new camera that I was so reluctant to like spend 200 bucks just to fix my camera video issues. And I was like, okay, I'll I spend way. I finally came to the realization that I've spent 200 bucks on way dumber stuff than a camera that I use for the podcast that I'll use for the podcast for a long time. Then I just bought it and solved my problems. And what do you know? It was very easy and very well worth it. So the same thing is for your chair, 
Are you going to spend time like, trying to finagle a, a weird position with a couch and uh, with a cushion and a another pad on the inside? No, just suck it up, buy another chair, and uh, work harder, and make a little more money, and, and figure it out. Because it's not worth hurting your back and spending all the money to go fix yourself afterwards. We want to avoid having to fix ourselves. That's that's the key here. So, I'll actually add one more, one last thing. Go get massages. Go go to physiotherapy and go to Cairo and go to your osteo and whoever manual therapist that you trust and see and all that stuff. If you live in Vaughan, GTA, uh, Toronto, send me a message. If you have pains and stuff, I'll, I'll refer you to people that I know within my network. Um, it's worth it. Don't live in pain. These things, yes, they're expensive. Many of you have benefits through your through your work. Use them. Don't let the insurance company just keep that money and or your business or your company your employer, use your benefits. And either way, if it costs you 100, 150, 200 bucks to go get treated, is have you spent dumber things? Have you spent 200 bucks on dumber things than fixing your back pain, which is literally impacting your sleep, your performance, your relationships, your fitness, and everything else in your life? Like, no, it's worth it. So go do it. Don't be, don't be a cheap ass about those things. Go fix yourself because it's for you. It's not about anything else. Go fix yourself. So that's it. So I hope that uh, this has been helpful. Again, none of this is sponsored. I'm not recommending, especially for the you know the two big things in the middle, the steroids and the psychedelics. I'm certainly not recommending that you go out there and blindly do any or all of these things. But if it sounds good to you, if the pros are outweighing the cons, if financially it's viable for you and it's going to help you, then by all means do it. And once again, don't forget to do all the basic stuff. Don't forget to go outside. Don't forget to exercise. Don't forget to work out hard. Don't forget to follow a structured program. Don't forget to sleep well. Don't forget to eat well, blah, blah, blah. Be consistent. But if all of these things, if you can do all of those things and you're looking for a little bit more, you have the capacity financially and energy-wise for a little bit more, then by all means, look into them and uh, and go right ahead. These tools have been invented for a reason. They do help. They're, they can be relied on a little bit too much but they're not there to to harm you. So especially don't rely solely on any of these things and especially especially the steroids. That's not the thing, you know, don't just don't just be sticking needles in your butt and sitting on the couch eating chips. That's that ain't how it works. Those people who you who people talk about like, oh yeah, that guy's jacked, but like he used steroids. Like, okay, yeah, he still works his goddamn ass off. So, you know, whatever. You can complain or you can just, you know, work hard. Anyways. I think that's enough. Be smart about these things. Think critically. Please reach out to me if you have any individual or specific questions. Obviously, I can't speak to you specifically about the the problems that you have in the context of your life. If you have any questions or comments or concerns about any of these things, you need more information, whatever, please reach out to me directly. Uh, Instagram, probably the best way, or through my website uh, at Daniel Yoris on Instagram, danielyoris.com as a website. And... Um, and that's it. I hope you I hope you found this helpful. If there's brands and stuff, you know, reach out. We'll, we'll we can we can chat about these topics. Uh, not to necessarily promote them and and whatever, but things help, and we're all about helping people here. So, if there are things that you want to get out into the world that you think help and and will be beneficial to most people, then uh, then let's chat. Reach out to me. Send them my way, and uh, and all that good stuff. So, share this episode with a friend. I appreciate each and every one of you. Go outside. Be a good person. Rate and review the podcast. Let's not forget that one. Rate and review the podcast. Subscribe on YouTube. Uh, what other whatever other influencer things need to be said. And uh, yeah, be a good person. Go outside. Work hard. And we'll chat soon.